So, you want to work in investment banking, but don't understand the career path, responsibilities, or compensation levels? Let's see if we can clear this up a little. Let's start with the big picture. Banking roles can be divided into senior bankers, MDs, and SVPs who focus on clients, mid-level bankers, or VPs, who lead execution, and junior bankers, called analysts and associates, who create analyses and materials for the senior bankers to present to clients. Let's take a look at each role in detail and the compensation for each level. To provide real-life context, we'll also walk through a typical pitch project. Let's start with analysts. At top-tier banks, analysts are typically post-university graduates with high GPAs and stellar test scores who can make it past the rigorous hiring process in which only 2-3% to of candidates are accepted. On the job, analysts create the nuts and bolts of virtually every part of a deal. They create financial projection models, client presentations, and also help coordinate deal execution logistics, often for multi-billion dollar transactions. The analyst role typically lasts two to three years. After that, top performing analysts can be directly promoted to the role of associate, but many leave for buy-side roles in private equity, hedge funds, and venture capital, or go the corporate route and work at everything from early stage startups to large companies. Some even start their own companies, and a few may choose to enroll in an MBA program. In short, investment banking opens the door to many attractive opportunities as a result of the selectivity of top-tier programs and the rigor of the job and the responsibilities placed on analysts, as we'll discuss shortly. Now, let's look at the next role, associates. While some associates are direct promotes or laterals from other banks, most associates are hired out of top-tier MBA or other master's degree programs. On the job, associates take guidance from mid- and senior-level bankers and oversee analysts as they create models and presentations for clients. While analysts typically create the materials, associates are ultimately responsible for the accuracy and quality of the work. After three to four years, an associate can be promoted to vice president or VP, also called director at some banks. VPs typically act as a buffer between senior and junior bankers, but ultimately ensure that senior banker demands are met. They also manage day-to-day -day client requests. VPs are often called deal quarterbacks because they coordinate deal team execution. VPs aim to become a senior vice president or SVP, also called executive director which is the last role before the top position of Managing Director, or MD. SVPs are MDs in training. They're responsible for prospecting for new business, building relationships with client CEOs, and proving themselves as deal makers. If they are promoted to MD, it typically happens in two to three years. Unfortunately, not all SVPs become MDs. Managing Directors are the most senior bankers, their responsibilities are to grow the client base, to execute transactions, and to bring in fees by becoming a trusted advisor to company CEOs. In addition to being good with numbers, they need top-notch people skills and a deep understanding of corporate strategy. In return for their skills and hard work, they often earn well over $1 million per year. Now, let's see how these roles operate day to day with a typical pitch project. Most client engagements begin with a presentation, or pitch, to a client with the aim of getting the client to hire the bank. In our case, an MD calls a CEO, and the CEO invites the MD to pitch to represent the CEO on the sale of their business. The MD and their SVP meet with the deal team. The SVP is eyeing a promotion to MD, so they lead the discussion and provide high-level guidance for what needs to be covered in the pitch presentation. In a separate meeting, the VP, associate, and analyst sit down to lay out the key slides that need to be constructed and the relevant supporting financial analyses. The associate takes the role of sketching out any remaining slides and sends them to the analyst. The analyst then gets to work on the presentation for the client, including all supporting analyses, often working around the clock to meet client deadlines. The analyst sends work back to the associate, who checks it and provides comments, and requests another revision, or turn. After a few iterations across the deal team, 
the finalized presentation goes back to the SVP and the MD. Then, the MD and SVP meet with the client to present their views and the client, impressed by their thoughtful work, hires the bank. Banking is a high-intensity profession. CEOs are demanding clients, and as a result, this work is highly demanding, with analysts and associates often working 80 to 90 hour weeks or more. This slows down meaningfully as bankers reach the VP, SVP level, and even more so at the MD level. But even MDs are on call for their clients 24-7. Why do this? In addition to working with bright people and having significant impact on the corporate world, the pay is very attractive. Analysts at top-tier banks typically earn 120 to 170 k per year right out of university. Associates typically earn 250 to 500,000 or more. VPs earn 400 to 700 k. SVPs are typically in the high six figures. And MDs can make 1 million per year or more with top bankers earning 5 to 10 million plus. To recap, Senior bankers build relationships and provide high-level guidance. The mid-level bankers coordinate and oversee junior bankers who create and refine client materials. And finally, while this is an intense job, the pay is very attractive. Hopefully, you now have more clarity on the career path, responsibilities, and compensation in investment banking.